Hello friends and family. Welcome back to the farm. Um, if you can't tell by the glistening on my face, I've actually been outside all morning working my hiney off. Um, but the photographer is on her way to our house to do photos. <laughs> so I had to go inside real quick. Um, you know, try to look somewhat presentable, but the sweat's still just beaming through. Um, but my goodness, it was such a productive day on the farm. We harvested so many stinking flowers. I mean, I think we had like six or seven buckets full, and when I say buckets full, they each had about seven or eight bunches of flowers in them. Those are bunches of uh, 10 and 15. So that felt really good to just see the huge push um, of flowers. We also got more peppers planted, some seed potatoes, our first round of cucumbers, uh, trellis those. We got the dahlia beds cleaned out. Um, so things are rocking and rolling, but I thought, you know what? You guys should get special perks because y'all have been with me on this journey, gosh, for a few years now. And I know many of you guys have followed us since I was pregnant with June, had June, then transitioned and like trying to raise a baby and farm and YouTube and like do all the things. Um, and I just appreciate you guys being here for the journey and I thought doing a little behind the scenes for the book would be really cool. Um, I have been told that later this month I can release more information and talk more in depth about what the book is. Um, but right now I can let you guys kind of see behind the scenes of what it looks like uh, doing photographs of the book what um kind of what, what yeah really just what that looks like and so that's what I wanted to kind of do today and then we'll end this vlog and I'll kind of show you uh some of the things we got done Nathan did get some of the gravel uh spread that looks so nice so I can't wait to show you all that uh, but essentially what I do with the photographer is obviously I've written the book so I know what type of photos I need and what things uh would just be more helpful like if I was talking about uh trellising um it would probably be helpful to have you know some photos of what what that looks like so you guys can get a mental picture so what I do is of course I have my notebook <laughs> I have a notebook. Uh, I keep stocking this just so you guys know. Um, Walmart can't even keep up with how many notebooks I buy, but I, um, especially since I have been going through the final manuscript, um, you know, just reviewing it and everything like that, working through edits, I have a better idea of the photos that I need. And so I go through and I write down, all right, I need a photo of this, a photo of this, a photo of this, and I know kind of where I'm placing those in the book. Um, and so she'll come and we have kind of the shot list written out. And we we just knock it out. Uh, usually she doesn't come this uh, early in the day. Most of the time it's later in the evening, but due to my crazy schedule this week um, and her crazy schedule, we had to kind of do it midday. It's around three o'clock right now, um, but I think it'll be fine. So this is a lot of things that need to get done uh, anyway. So it's like laying some irrigation, things like that I need to take care of. But uh, I'm excited for you guys to see kind of behind the scenes of what that looks like. But man, it is certainly a hot one today. So one of the first things I plan on doing before she gets here is cleaning up the pavilion area. Um, I just kind of have leftover randomness from Nathan uh, hanging up a bunch of things for me over the weekend. So I am going to work on that. Um, so gotta get this place looking decent. <laughs> gotta get it looking pretty good. Also, all of you guys who ordered tool belts, we are starting to ship those out this week. Um, so Emmett, the guy who makes the tool belts, uh, I don't think maybe he realized how uh, time intensive this project was. Uh, so we thought we were gonna have them last week, but we're gonna have them this week. Nathan's stopping by today to get a batch and shipping them out. But by the end of the week, all the tool belts will be shipped. So we appreciate you guys so much. Um, also, Pots by Terry is working on our pottery. So uh, this past fall, we launched one mug. This time, we are gonna launch two mugs. Um, they're gonna be quite a bit different, quite a bit bigger. Uh, just each potter kind of has their own style. She gave me like some testers to choose from. Um, but I am really, really excited about what these are going to look like.
when I think about this space that I've created out in the raised bed garden, um, it just makes me feel so good. And to all the gardeners out there working hard in the heat and you're trying to get your, you know, your vegetables in and your flowers in, it's so important to have that place that you can just go to and rest that no work needs to be done. And it's really just a way to kind of feel rejuvenated as the gardener. And so I have, you know, kind of created these spaces or still am creating these spaces throughout the farm. Um, obviously the pavilion was here when we bought the farm, but just decorating it really just a place out of the, out of the sun where I can come and just be creative. We're creating the space down by the greenhouse and then I'm working on um, the entrance into the cottage garden as well. Uh, don't forget about yourself you guys. I more than anyone know that this time of year I can go into like full-blown like got to get everything done right like working from sun up to sundown and that's all fine and dandy and it's a part of really it's just the name of the game when you are farming and gardening and homesteading um but make sure you're creating those spaces where you can just sit and look at the beauty, where you can just sit and take in all the hard work that you have put into your garden. And even throughout the day, instead of going inside to rest or even going inside to eat lunch, I find these places that I've created throughout the farm and I sit and I just look at the farm. I dream about the future for the farm. Um, and I celebrate the victories that we've already uh, accomplished on the farm. All right, so the photographer is running a few minutes behind, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what's going on. It's so hard, I wanna show you like all the things I just planted, but Friday I have planned um, a garden tour for you all, so I can't give away all the tricks of the trade yet. Oh, man. You know when it's like early afternoon and you're already just so pooped because you've put in such a long day and it feels like so good? That's how I feel. <laughs> All right. So you can see he has started to lay it. I'm pretty sure he got it all laid over here. We have to uh, take like, I don't know, what's it called? Like a damper and like level it and pack it in. Um, but right now it's easier just to get like wheelbarrows we're taking the gorilla cart and putting them in here so that's going to be kind of a time consuming thing so i did want to show you guys some fun things going on in the greenhouse i have some nasturtiums so a funny thing about this is i have had these seeds for two years so my friend natalie over at hey it's a good life sent me these nasturtiums a couple years ago and the first year i tried to grow them i had just direct seeded them in my garden and i didn't have a ton of luck with them um but this year i started them and they're all coming up so we're going to throw these in the cottage garden um, maybe find some different pots around the pavilion but if you are in an urban setting growing or you're just looking for some fillers. Nasturtium's really great because it trellises really well and it's dual purpose. So the flowers are actually edible. Uh, you can put them on ice cream, um, which is, they have like a spicy radish taste, so that may not be your thing. Uh, you can put them on salads, different things like that. Um, but you can also take the leaves when they're mature and harvest them and make it into pesto, uh, which is something I do and I freeze it. So that was actually why I started um, these this year is because we just use the last of our pesto um, from a couple years ago so I will probably just like I said throw those in the cottage garden find empty spaces um, another thing I like to do too is I told you guys I'm like starting lettuce and spinach uh, about every week and a half and even if I don't know if there's a space for it in the garden or maybe I don't have a space in my mind it's really good to kind of have those things that way if you have a plant die or you have an empty space you can just go in and fill now while nasturtiums might not be the best bet for that because because you will need to um, either trellis them or give them enough space. Uh, things like lettuce, um, different spinaches, different root vegetables. So we'll be doing this with like radish, beets, and carrots. We'll be plant planting them in those little mini blocks. Um, and you can just go in and kind of fill as you need to, which I actually find super helpful. Um, and we are dwindling down to our last bit of basil. Oh my gosh, y'all, that smells so good. <laughs> Uh, so these are getting pretty leggy as you guys can see here um, and I don't have a space for them in the garden yet I think these are probably gonna go into the cottage garden so what I'm gonna do I got my old snips out um, I'm gonna give these guys a haircut 
Um, so I am just going through, this is really similar to the Zinnia video uh, that I did. It was like a quick little reel. Um, so where you've got your like two leaves coming out, just clip above it. These are super, super tall. Um, I'm hoping you guys can see. So I'm just cutting the tops off and essentially what it does, instead of your plant growing taller, it's gonna stay squattier, bushier, and by doing this, it actually produces way more uh, blooms, no matter what you're using it for. So if you're using basil to cook with, if you're using basil for fillers, for whatever purpose, um, I still you know, recommend doing this because you're gonna get so many blooms. And so now I have, which even some of these I could do a bit smaller, so this is going to let my plant stay in the greenhouse a bit longer um, and be totally fine. Now the cool thing about basil too is one I could go inside if it was dinner time and you know dress this on something. This is a cinnamon basil which is like a Thai basil. Um, so if I was making something like that I could use this. You can also take this root it in water or even just stick it in a new tray of soil. Um, so there are so many different things you can do with your top sheet don't have to just toss them granted if you do toss them it's not the end of the world it's fine um, I'm gonna go inside stick this in water root them um, and that way I don't have to start more basil it's already kind of started for me so go through give the rest of these guys a haircut it's actually super satisfying giving all these guys a trim all righty those look pretty good. All right, now another thing I wanted to show you before Bailey gets here is the dahlias. I need to take this with me so I don't forget them. And I'll come back and prune the rest of these babies. My uh, amarillo or amarado, yeah, it's amarado basil. It's a purple basil. It is, uh, I need a pocket. To get in my pocket it is beautiful but it's also pretty leggy and it's going to be in the greenhouse for at least another week so i'll come back in here give it a haircut too all of our sunflowers we've been seeding look great um the first round of dahlias that i potted up with so the goal is to have dahlias in the raised bed lord i don't know in a couple weeks so the first set of dahlias that i up potted are looking fantastic. So I kind of succession sewed them um, when I up potted them so I could succession sew them in the garden. Um, the second round that I did is starting to come up. You guys can see here. Um, so the goal is to lay irrigation and the dahlia beds tomorrow. Um, figure out like our trellising options, get all of that done. We're gonna do the single line down the middle. Um, so hopefully by next week, we will have the first round of dahlias out in the garden. All right, I'm sweating like a crazy person. So I'm gonna go inside, wait for the photographer to get here. Actually, I really need to water the green stalk. She's looking sad, then I'm gonna go inside. Then I'll catch up with you guys for some behind the scenes. It is later in the afternoon from when I started this vlog. Um, so the whole point of this vlog was behind the scenes uh, photo shoot for the book. Uh, but unfortunately, I ended up getting very little footage. So our photographer had to bring her two young children because she couldn't find a babysitter and all the mamas out there, y'all get it. So I got a couple time lapses that I popped in here, uh, but wasn't able to really talk to her the way I wanted to. So maybe we will retry this video um, in June, which will be our last photo shoot for the book. But <laughs> hey guys. if y'all can't tell, we are pooped. The Poop. sun, I'm telling you, one, it gets hot here in Arkansas, like we're used to seeing hundreds, you know, like that's no big deal. But seeing in early May, 
we've not seen mid 90s. I'm like, it, I got up to 98 today at one point. Just um, not adjusted to it. Yeah. We're not adjusted. So Nathan worked on spreading some of the gravel, which I showed you guys that we had plans to go back out after dinner, but we are both just kind of zapped by the sun today. Mm -hmm. um, My car showed 94 today. So I know it got to 94. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I know. And then I have all my uh, Canadian viewers telling me that they're not, they still got snow on the ground. <laughs> I know. Who, I was watching somebody on Instagram, Five Mary's Farm, and they got snow. I mentioned that the other day, or I mentioned that on my, I go live on Instagram every Monday, and I mentioned that. That to me is wild, though. If you guys, yeah. here's my little um, environmental two cents. Uh, <laughs> here we go. I know a lot of people think climate change isn't real or maybe it's silly, but snowing in California in May, we are seeing signs. Our environment is showing signs that uh, this isn't normal, right? Like this isn't, it's just, it's not normal. Um, and for me, every time I see something like that, it is just kind of a sucker punch of like, whoa, what we do is making a large impact on our planet and it's being affected and it's showing signs in so many different ways um and it's good babe <laughs> do your part y'all do, do your part even if it's a small part i bought this really cool book will you go get it real quick Where's the, that? right here on the counter I bought this book. I told you guys that Charlie's going to be home with me all summer. So I really wanted to honestly just not work all the time and think of fun things we can do. You guys know my little eco-friendly heart. And so I bought her this book. I'll, I'll find it and link it. And it's the extraordinary book um, that eats itself. And every single page in this book is a project that you can do. And so the first one you can do was making your own uh, worm bin. So it tells you how to make a worm bin. And then the back side of it, you actually get to like um, cut it. And like this is paper. And so it's all, um, compostable. it's all compostable. The inks are vegetable inks, which is really cool. Um, but on the back, it has a small little section, which is what I'm going to bring up. It says, and remember, a lot of small actions can make a big difference. And I think that's so true is... I know for many years I was hindered to do anything because I thought, well, what can I really do? Yeah. Um, and it really was just this massive shift of like, it's not what just I can do or Nathan can do. It's what our family can do, what your family can do. Um, and I think a large part of that, like, you know, that may not look like doing environmental campaigns. That may not look like recycling. If that looks like planting food in your backyard, you are reducing your carbon footprint. You are bettering the environment. You are creating ecosystems for planets or for animals that are going extinct, for insects that are going extinct. Like you're doing your part just by planting food and flowers in your yard, you yeah. know? I'll be honest. I was... Um Anytime you mentioned climate change, I just laughed and I was like, really, he did. Are, are you, are you bringing this up? This is ridiculous. This is not real guilty right here, mm -hmm. you know, but, um, we as a culture are just irresponsible when it comes to recycling, when it comes to just single use plastic. I mean, and I think a lot of it isn't, like, some of it is being irresponsible. I think a lot of it is um, is ignorance. And I, and I don't say that in a mean way. It, it's, like, just the lack of knowing. Um, that's something that when I did my environmental campaign last year, I had so many people. They're like, hey, why is this a big deal? And I think for a, a few years I would get really frustrated because I would feel like, why are people not waking up? Why are people not doing this? And then it was really just kind of like me stepping into compassion in the sense of like a lot of people don't know. Like they don't yeah. realize the effect that that water bottle is having. Or, and really like most, that's a whole other thing. Most of the things don't even get recycled properly anyway. So like right. it's so like on a larger scale than that. I think for us as gardeners, as homesteaders, as farmers, one large way we can do our part is by growing our own food, by keeping our dollars local, by investing in our backyards and those ecosystems. Um, um, more and more people would adapt that. Yeah, Things go back change. to the way it used to be. That's right. Uh, there's something so powerful about looking how your ancestors did it. Um, 
And it's so funny now, like I'm almost 30 and I'm doing things very similar to how my papa did when I was a kid. I thought that was crazy. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. why are we out here sweating our butts off? And like, is this really worth it? Why can't they go to the store and buy food? And now seeing the bigger picture, it's just like, whoa, this is making such a huge impact. Um, and it feels good to be a part of that journey. It feels good to know that most of our food comes from us, from yeah. the animals that you raise, from the vegetables that I grow. I don't know, it just makes, every little step makes a huge impact. Funny enough, who would have thought that a vlog that was supposed to be behind the scenes of a photo shoot turned into a little environmental rant. Um, yeah, welcome to the life of Nathan Reagan. Squirrel. These are these are late night conversations with Jill. Yeah. <laughs> how do we how do we do better? Um, but I do think it's something that this should be conversations that we have more often, right? It Take seventeen. <laughs> So our children keep getting up from bed. Uh, but the moral of the story is even if you do or don't believe in climate change, even if you do or don't plant a garden, it is important to listen to other people's opinions and be able to have grace-filled conversations, right? Like Nathan and I had a lot of grace-filled conversations and he was like, hey, I don't really, I don't get this. I don't, I don't understand where you're coming from. And, and quite frankly, I, I just, I think it's, a man-made thing. And that was a good opportunity for us to just talk through that, do a lot of research together. Um, and let's like switch from the whole like environmental stance, just from growing a garden. Some of the best ways you can encourage people to grow a garden is just by talking about your life authentically. When you see somebody, there's probably not a single person Nathan meets that does not know that his wife has a farm and we garden and homestead, right? Yeah. Like it just comes up a natural conversation and you might spark an interest of someone. You might bring up something that they wanted to do for a long time, but just felt limited to do it. And by hearing your story or our story, it just encouraged them like, hey, go grab a packet of seeds and plant them. Like you can do this. And so it's always good just to share your beliefs in a very respectful, kind, loving way. Your values, what you stand on for us, that's the garden, that's you know the farm, that's environmental stances, but we don't ever wanna do that in a uh, shoving it down your throat. We live our lives based off our convictions. And if you live your life based off of your convictions, you'd be surprised how many people you would reach and inspire. Right. And I know it's been really motivating uh, for us to just be really authentic in all the things um, that we feel strongly about and just having that, um, having that conversation gracefully, I think. That's good. I got nothing to add. Done. Okay. Well, <laughs> we tired, y'all. We, we tired. are tired. But... My goal is to get another vlog out Thursday and Friday, and then there's going to be a vlog Saturday because we're going to have our new goat. So Mama's oh, hoping yeah. they may be these short vlogs this week, but Mama's got a lot of content on the farm. I'm hoping to just get it all out to you guys. You heard it. Just don't hold me to it. <laughs> it's a matter of getting it edited into you guys. So. And that's the, that's the yeah. problem, yeah. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.